Give me justice, O God, and plead my cause against a nation that is faithless. From the deceitful and cunning, rescue me, for you, O God, are my strength. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. Good evening, and welcome to this Vigil Mass for the fifth Sunday of Lent. As we gather, let us first pause and call to mind our sins and ask God for his forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which out of love for the world your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them. O my people, I will put my spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A responsorial psalm. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness that you may be revered. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord, my soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn, let Israel wait for the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. A reading from the book, from a letter to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit. If only the spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you. The word 
of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Now, a man was ill, Lazarus, from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. So the sisters sent word to him, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to the end in death, but it is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he had heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you, and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. He said this, and then told them, our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death, while they thought that he meant ordinary sl sleep. So then Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died, and I am glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas, called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house, comforting her, saw Mary get up and quickly go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? 
So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done, began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As we celebrate this weekend, the fifth Sunday of Lent, we are nearing Holy Week. Next Sunday, we will celebrate the beginning of Holy Week with Palm Sunday, where our Lord Jesus enters Jerusalem. But here we are on this fifth Sunday of Lent, and it's a tradition in the United States that we cover our crucifix and statues in our churches. And here we have this reading from John's Gospel, and it's a foreshadowing. It's pointing to what Jesus is ultimately going to do for us by his raising Lazarus from the dead. I'd like to focus for a moment though on that reading from the letter to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit. If only the spirit of God dwells in you. I want to focus on that because as I've repeated many times, not only uh, in these masses online, but in the parishes, our baptism, I really don't believe we fully understand the power of our baptism and what took place when we became beloved sons and daughters of God through our baptism. Yes, our original sin was washed away. Yes, we became that beloved son or daughter of God. But in that sacrament, we were marked forever. We became a dwelling of the Holy Spirit. And what St. Paul's letter to the Romans is saying here is that we are more than just human bodies. We are filled with the Holy Spirit by our baptism. And that's strengthened then by our confirmation. It is fed by the grace of Holy Communion. This grace of our baptism is why we believe in the resurrection. It's why we are living this time of Lent to prepare for what our Lord ultimately does because our baptism prepared us not for this life. Our baptism prepared us for eternal life. Life in heaven. Where God desires for us to be with him for all eternity. We live this life here in preparation for the next. But the next, what God has planned for us. In the glory of the resurrection. We filled with joy. Tomorrow morning in our office of readings, the second reading uh, is from St. Athanasius. And I'd like to read just a, a portion of that uh, in his Easter letter. When we celebrate the feast in our own day, what path are we to take? As we draw near to this feast, who is to be our guide? Beloved, it must be none other than the one whom you will address with me as our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, I am the way. As blessed John tells us, 
It is Christ who takes away the sin of the world. It is he who purifies our souls as the prophet Jeremiah says, Stand upon the ways, look and see which is the good path, and you will find it in the way of amendment for your souls. In former times, the blood of goats and the ashes of a calf were sprinkled on those who were unclean, but they were able to purify only the body. Now, through the grace of God's word, who is Jesus, the word made flesh. Everyone is made abundantly clean. If we follow Christ closely, we shall be allowed, even on this earth, to stand, as it were, on the threshold of the heavenly Jerusalem and enjoy the contemplation of that everlasting fe feast, like the blessed apostles who, in following the Savior as their leader, showed and still show the way to obtain the same gift from God. I love that image of how even here in this life, because we are not just human and bodily, we are not just flesh, we are filled with the Holy Spirit by our baptism. As beloved sons and daughters of God, even in this life, we can stand on the edge, as St. Athanasius says, says, and on the threshold, stand as it were on the threshold of the heavenly Jerusalem. My friends, regardless of where we are, regardless of the trials we're going through, what we celebrate in the spiritual communion that you're celebrating as I celebrate this Holy Mass, we are on the threshold of the heavenly Jerusalem because we are body and spirit. As we continue to prepare for Holy Week and the celebration of Easter, may we truly live who God has created us to be as his beloved disciples filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who's crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and his Son, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look and the life of the world to come for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer to our Heavenly Father our prayers of petition for the church, that she may put her trust in Jesus, the resurrection and the life, and believe in him through all the seasons of life and death on her spiritual journey. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for refugees, for the oppressed and abandoned, that God may settle them upon their own land, putting his spirit of life in them again. We pray to the Lord. That we may give Jesus the sacred tribute of our faith, believing in him even beyond the death of our hopes and of our loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that our spirits may be alive because of righteousness, giving room to the divine spirit of Jesus to work marvels of grace and peace in our souls, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer, 
whose dreams lie in the tomb, and the divine promise to open all graves and raise the dead may be active, bringing them healing and hope. We especially pray for those being affected by this coronavirus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, that Jesus, who wept at the loss of his friend Lazarus, may raise them up to the abundant life of heaven and console those they have left behind. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we place our prayers before you this day. We ask if it be your will that you hear and answer them through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. This evening's Mass is being offered for the living and deceased members of the Leonard and Dora Tramp family. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as True man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God raised him from the tomb. Just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Agnus Dei, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, 
Qui tollis peccat hamundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tollis peccat hamundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Everyone who lives and believes in me will not die forever, says the Lord. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. I'd like to also pray the, for the intercession of St. Joseph, the prayer that Archbishop Lucas has asked us to pray. To you, O blessed Joseph, do we come in our tribulation, through that charity which bound you to the Immaculate Virgin Mother of God, and through the paternal love with which you embrace the child Jesus, we humbly beg you graciously to regard the inheritance which Jesus Christ has purchased by his blood and with your power and strength to aid us in our necessities. O most loving Father, ward off from us every contagion of error and corrupting influence. O our most mighty protector, be propitious to us, and from heaven assist us in our struggle with the power of darkness. And as once you rescued the child Jesus from deadly peril, so now protect God's children from the snares of the enemy and from all adversity. Shield to each one of us by your constant protection. Amen. Thank you again for joining on this Facebook Live Mass. I will have Mass for Sunday tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. on Facebook Live. Again, 9.30 tomorrow morning. Thank you and God bless you.